Hey, Psych2Goers, welcome back to another video. Have you been feeling sad lately for no apparent reason? Does it feel like it just won't go away? Are you even more discouraged because you don't know why you feel sad? It can be hard to pinpoint the reason why you're feeling sad when it overwhelms you. It's not as simple as thinking yourself into happiness and judging yourself harshly for how you're feeling can make matters worse. Before we get into it, please note that if you've been feeling down for a long time and suspect you might have depression, seeking professional help is of utmost importance. With that said, here are five reasons why you could be feeling down to guide you when you're at a loss. Number one, a lack of communicating your needs. Is it difficult for you to open up about your feelings? Do you count on others to guess your needs? Sadness has a way of rendering a person silent, making you unable to put into words how you're feeling. This repression can result from not speaking up, like in instances of expecting others to read our minds or anticipate our needs. Repression like this can be harmful if the need for compassion and empathy from others isn't being fulfilled. A lack of communicating your needs can negatively affect your romantic relationships and work as well. It might even cause you to be passed over for a promotion, for example. Number two, low self-esteem. Do you seem to have a low opinion of yourself? Are you your own worst critic? If so, this is also a contributing factor to sadness that doesn't seem to go away. It plops you right in the center of a vicious cycle. When you're not happy with who you are, it's more likely to cause depression, and then depression itself makes you not like who you are. If your self-esteem is low, you're more likely to think that negative experiences in your life are a result of a character flaw you have, according to the vulnerability model, which is an approach to explain this cycle. Another approach is the SCAR model, which says that the depression in the equation comes first. So you think that a negative thing will happen to you because you're depressed. Number three, lack of vitamin D. Ever had someone tell you to go out and take a walk in the sunshine when you're in an off mood? The reason for this tried and true remedy comes down to vitamin D, aptly known as the sunshine vitamin. A Cambridge study in 2013 found that people with less vitamin D levels were more likely to experience depression. But not to worry, because if you've gone to the doctor and been told that your vitamin D levels are low, you're in good company. 42% of the population has suboptimal levels of vitamin D. Whoa. And according to Healthline, just 10 to 30 minutes of sunshine is good enough. Number four, stress piling up. Do you feel like your stress keeps mounting? Are you viciously clutched in its claws? In his book, Why Zebras Don't Get Ulcers, Robert Sapolsky writes that the human response system is better suited to deal with short-term stressors rather than long-term ones. For example, a caveman or cavewoman would fight a vicious animal, but then promptly return to a relaxed state. In contemporary times, we don't have to worry about fighting a bear, phew, but the demands of our careers, finances, or relationship problems can be draining. Being stressed out and having many demands without giving your mind a rest can make you feel like everything in your life is moving too fast. The subsequent lack of control can be jarring. A pressure cooker of stress can inadvertently bring about sadness. And number five, you don't have a solid support system around you. There's some truth to the age old adage from a Beatles song. I get by with a little help from my friends. But meaningful social connections can also come in the form of interaction with community members or people in a church group. Mood boosting social interactions might include having a chat with a friend on the phone, catching up or helping a friend by offering advice for something they're going through. Connecting with people when you're down can reduce stress and increase your motivation. However, if forging meaningful connections is difficult for you, a the therapist is always someone you can trust and confide in. Sadness can be an isolating experience, but you don't have to deal with it all alone. Don't be afraid to ask for help, nor let your apprehensions deter you. No matter how bad it gets, there's always hope that things can get better. Reaching out to a psychologist or counselor and getting the help you need can not only improve your life, but also encourage others to break the cycle and seek help. We hope we were able to give you a little insight into some of the reasons you might be feeling down inexplicably. Do any of these describe you? Are there different ways you identify why you're feeling sad? Leave a comment down below to share any experiences and thoughts you have as well. If you find this video helpful, be sure to hit the like button and share it with those out there.
baffled by their inexplicable melancholy. Don't forget to subscribe to Psych2Go and hit the notification bell for more new videos. And as always, thanks for watching.